Hi everybody, this is Willie at newandlostcrafts.com and uh, what you're looking at is our new car. If you follow the blog at all, um, you might remember a post where uh, my wife and my daughter got in an accident with our old minivan and in the end uh, we settled with the insurance company and they decided it was not worth fixing it so um, we got a check from them and this is what we bought. We got ourselves a Subaru Outback and today I'm going to be showing you how to check uh, your basic fluids underneath the hood. So first things first, let's get to the hood. Okay, on most cars, if you open the driver's door and look down by the feet, there's usually a latch to unleash the hood. And this is most cars, some are different. Check your owner's manual. Pull that and the hood should pop for you. And then we're back at the hood once pulling that lever. And you'll notice it did come loose. On the Subaru, um, there's a little latch clear at the bottom that you have to push over to be able to lift that up to get to the engine compartment. And now you see this, uh, this stick here. Um, what you're gonna do is just grab that stand it up and all the hoods have a place you see how that stood up now all the hoods have a place where that plugs into to keep the hood open a um, few pieces of advice if you can um, do this in a garage and certainly don't do it on a windy day because the wind can can catch an open hood like this and really kind of be dangerous and then the Subarus are nice, um, pretty much anything with a yellow cap, um, this one underneath there, is what we're going to be looking at. I'm going to take each one of them, uh, just one at a time, uh, show you what I look for and, uh, and how to do that. So, Windshield wiper fluid. Okay, so now we're looking at this big guy right here, which is the windshield wiper fluid reservoir. Um, again, another clear tank. They are on most vehicles. This one is usually pretty easy to tell what's going on. Um, you can see our level right now is about here. Um, you can overfill these, um, but it's not going to cause much in the way of harm. Um, so I'm going to take um, some fresh fluid and fill it up to about this first ridge right here. Um, there's there's not much in the way of guidelines for this, so use your best judgment, but don't fill it all the way to the top. You'll just make a mess. Um, so let me go okay, get ready so for that. Okay, so back with the uh, windshield wiper fluid. Um, this one I don't worry too much about uh, little spills and whatnot. Uh, this is such a nice container that we're dealing with here. So I'm just going to take my juice. And again, this is another situation where I don't worry at all about brand. Um, sometimes I'll get the stuff that's more specific to cold weather, um, like this one right here. Um, you know, it says it protects down to a little bit cooler uh, temperatures. I guess I don't know if it makes much of a difference. But here you go. Um, you can see we're nice and topped off now. That's all there is to it for that one. And sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're green, sometimes they're orange. Like I said, a lot I don't give a lot of heck about that one and I mix so them here's freely. Conveniently located, uh, the where you check the oil and where you add the oil. Um, one thing I wanted to mention in all this is that even though this is a Subaru, uh, most cars kind of have the same configuration. So that's why I'm hoping this video helps out most people. Um, you know, the, by all means, the, the coolant system is typically up here. Your windshield washing stuff is here. Uh, your, your braking, your power steering, um, and your transmission can be on either side, but they're generally in the same place. But let's talk about the oil system. Um, so the way you check your oil, Again, this is a dipstick method, it is on every car I've ever seen. Um, so it's this long metal dipstick, and again, you use your paper towel. Just pull it out, wipe it off, 
and stick it back in. Push it down solid and pull it back out. Now we're going to read it. Okay. For this particular vehicle, um, you have a dot right here and another dot that may be a little bit hard to see on the video, but that's your full versus low. Um, and you can clearly see this is nice and full. Uh, you know, the oil itself, this is a, another opportunity to tell when you should change your oil. Uh, it doesn't look real gritty or anything like that. So the dealership that we bought this from, you know, obviously did a pretty good job of getting new fluids in it. So we're good to go on the oil. Um, if you did need to change it, uh, or I mean not change it at this point, that's another video, but add any, <coughs> what you would do, make sure you always reinsert the dipstick. But that uh, container is right here. Get your funnel out and your appropriate oil in. Can't stress that enough, you need to check your, your car's documentation for this. For this Subaru, uh, in our climate conditions, the best thing we could put in there right now is uh, uh, 5W30, so it's a 5 weight uh, 30 oil. Um, during the summer months, it might be a little bit better to put like 10W40, it's a little bit heavier. Uh, it just depends on your conditions and your your vehicle user manual will tell you what to put in there and if the, you know, the weather conditions merit something different. But again, use your funnel um, and again add slowly and uh, you know after you add maybe a half a quart or so go ahead and check with the dipstick see where you're at. This is another situation that you don't really want to go over that, uh, that maximum level because it will cause you more trouble uh, than good. radiator. Alright, so now we're going to concentrate on this guy right here and sometimes it'll involve uh, this guy. couple tips, this is your coolant system, your uh, your radiator and uh, you, you need to be careful with this system because especially in this area it's going to be under pressure. Hopefully most of the time you're just going to be dealing with the reservoir uh, but if that reservoir is empty ever, uh, especially you know once the car is cooled down, um, it means you're going to have to add some directly to this. And honestly, at that point, you might want to take your your vehicle in if you don't know how to do it yourself, and get a radiator flush done uh, because you can get some pretty serious damage um, if you run this too low. Uh, but if you're out on the highway somewhere. And need to. Uh, if this is empty when the car's had a chance to cool down, you need to add some here first and then add to this guy. So I'm going to give you, you know, just what this car needs for right now. Um, I think we'll do a radiator flush in a future episode. I think that would be helpful for a lot of people as well as, a, as how to do your own oil change. But we're sticking to the basics today. So let's look at how we're doing with this coolant here. Um, Sometimes this is a little bit harder to see than the others. So you can see the lines in the container and we're upside down. Alright, so the top one is full, again in a cooled condition, and the bottom one down there is low. And if I look over here, same lines, get the light just right, you can see that fluid in there is at the low position. Um, so it's not empty. Um, but what we need to do is add some uh, some coolant to get it to the top position. Now, <clears throat> you can get all sorts of different brands of coolant. Um, uh, some would argue they perform better than others. I'm going to be using an Ace Hardware brand. Um, but the important part about this is that there's not going to be a lot of information in your user's manual about how to mix the coolant. Um, it's going to be on the bottle that you buy. And so typically a good place to start and read your bottle, uh, but is a 50-50 mixture of water and the coolant solution. And that's what I have in, in my bottle that we're going to be pouring in uh, here shortly. But it literally is just half water, half this stuff. Um, if you're starting with a brand new bottle, you're just going to need to pour some in straight, add about the same amount of water and work from there. 
Okay, so to top off the the coolant here, um, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I, I don't get real fancy about this stuff. I'm just going to use this Ace uh, coolant, which I've used it several times in the past with, uh, with our other car. And so, like I said, pay attention to your instructions. They have this whole matrix. It's pretty easy to understand. Um, but this is already mixed 50-50 with... Uh, you know what was originally in here and with just tap water and so we saw it was at the low level so all we're going to do is open this reservoir and like I've mentioned many times I always have a funnel around and we're going to open this guy up and practice opening these bottles uh, because they are child proofed Here's my advice, pour a little bit and check often, because you don't want to get too full. Because it's fairly easy to do. Okay. I was able to see it as I was filling it up, so it's right at the right level. Another additional thing with the, the antifreeze, <clears throat> be real careful about this stuff around animals. Um, it tastes real sweet. I guess one reason to spend a little bit more money, um, I actually haven't ever seen this stuff, but they'll actually put some bittering type agents some of them, but I've never seen it. I wish I could find it. So if anybody out there knows where to get that, uh, drop me a link and, and let me know where to get that. Because we have four dogs at this point, and uh, I can literally kill them if they get into too much of this stuff. Power steering fluid. Okay, so this one that we're looking at here <clears throat> is the power steering fluid. Um, in this particular vehicle, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to spot how your levels are doing here. Um, got a flashlight here. You can see a couple different markings. Uh, one that's for hot max, cold max on the, uh, the left hand side over here. Um, and then cold max, cold min. And these are actually really nice because they the containers you can see through them and the engine is cold at this point <laughs> and so we're at the cold max and so really good to go um, you know don't need to do anything here but if you needed to um, it's just like everything else it's probably getting a little redundant at this point but this lid pops off and again you're going to want to use your handy dandy funnel um, check your owner's manual for the, the correct fluid. Uh, make sure that that's right. If you don't have the right fluid, like I've said already many times, um, it can really wreak havoc on you. But you just put your funnel in there, um, fill it up. Now this is one um, where other cars I've seen, um, they use a dipstick for this. And that dipstick will be marked with uh, cold and hot levels, just like you see on this uh, little container here. Um, so very easy. Um, you just will be looking at a dipstick, so you're going to want to have your paper towel to wipe that off and get a good reading, just like we did on the oil, essentially. Um, just pay attention to the state of your car, and you should be good. Okay, the one I'm going to show you now is the brake fluid, and it's this little guy clear in the back here. Um, it's using my flashlight to point that out. And again, on this one, I've seen it both ways, both with a dipstick or with these little containers that you can actually see the level of the fluid through. Uh, you can see this one is marked with a min and a max, so it doesn't get much easier than that. And we're darn near the max level. 
Um, again, another situation, just like all these fluids, the only one it doesn't really apply to is your windshield wiper fluid. Um, make sure you check the, the owner's manual for the, uh, the correct stuff to use because it can really make or break you. Um, but let me scooch over here. If you did need to add some, um, I'll show you what it looks like when you take the lid off. Okay, we're back here at the brake fluid uh, container. Just got through taking its lid off. Um, this one is a little bit different. It, uh, it has a little strainer built into it. Um, and you don't need to take that strainer out. In fact, a lot of cases you can't. Um, this one, it looks like it'll just pop right out. Um, I'd recommend just leaving it in. Uh, you can pour new fluid right through it. Just keep a sharp eye on your levels because uh, a little brake fluid goes a long way. You see how uh, small this container is compared to, you know, some of the other ones we've been looking at. Um, but keep this reservoir um, like the rest of them, but even the lids most of the time will say specifically make sure that this is kept very clean. So we don't need to do anything there. Again, if you needed to, grab your funnel, uh, fill her up a little bit, and that's that. Okay, so I showed uh, a quick video at the beginning of this. Um, where at least the Subaru, and in most cars, you have these nice yellow caps indicating, you know, places where the average person, you know, should be doing maintenance on their car. A little bit more difficult one to find is this car has an automatic transmission and that takes its own fluid. And that's uh, clear down on this side of the engine underneath the air filter here. And so we're going to pull that out. This is a, a dipstick. This is where you want your paper towel. And you're not going to read anything yet. You're going to clean that off. And you're going to insert that dipstick back into its hole. This one's a little bit challenging to find. But not too bad. <coughs> okay, then you read it. And let me shine the flashlight on this here. As you can see, the, the fluid level is actually up to here, uh, you know, where the majority of it ends, and that's where you want to read it. So that's, be, that's full beyond all the levels. So it, the way you would read this one is cold range, hot range, and it's a little bit beyond that. And, you know, the thing that's kind of cool about that, and, you know, I don't know everything, folks, and, and I don't really, I can't give you advice on how you would drop this level at this point. Um, but we do notice with this new car that once you go and engage the transmission, especially into drive, <clears throat> it has a hard time engaging, and it'll sometimes kind of pop. And so that may very much have something to do with it. Uh, I I like to change my own oil, change my own air filters, oil, you know, oil filters. Um, but when it comes to the transmission, uh, that's a pretty heavy-duty job, and I leave it to other folks. But um, we'll probably take this in and have it looked at. Uh, it's not that far off, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Uh, we don't have that many problems, but really you'd want it to be down in this level at this point. So... Anyway, this is a hard one to see, but uh, there's a, kind of a tube that this, this dipstick plugs into um, that you're going to take the reading on. But definitely take that reading because if it gets low, um, that's a good indication you want to add some uh, fluid to it. <laughs> Another tricky thing about the transmission fluids is that where do you add more? And the answer is through that tube. And so in that case, is a funnel like this. Okay, that can reach clear down in there. Nice small uh, form that can reach in that tube. That's where you add it. Uh, clearly we're not going to do that today because there's a little bit too much. And we'll have to look into that. But hey, like I said, I don't know everything. Hi everybody, this is Willie at newandlostcrafts.com. I hope you found that uh, useful. 
this is something that will change for the variety of car that you have um, in your situation. So definitely check your owner's manual. Um, but if, if I can help at all, uh, definitely drop me a line. Uh, again, I'm not a car mechanic, but this stuff should be fairly easy for most. But that's why I wanted it to be today, is that, you know, folks that haven't had exposure to this, don't be afraid of it. Um, if you if you do start feeling leery about it, you know, get some help. Uh, drop me a line. Uh, go get some help from your local auto mechanic. But have them explain it to you, because this stuff isn't voodoo magic. All right, again, Willie at newandlostcrafts.com. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Bye.